Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I am making jelly prints, lots of jelly prints. Um, just using some different techniques, um, some different types of medium as well. So this is from my big giant pouch of white acrylic paint that's from Sennelier. And I got it very cheap on Amazon because it was on special offer. And phthalo blue golden high flow acrylic paint. I'll put pictures of them on. This is the paint here. You can see the size of the white. <laughs> so that was a background that I created. Now I'm using a mixture of photocopier paper and a sort of cartridge paper that's very cheap and thin. I'm not sure what weight they are, but they won't be very good. <laughs> so that was quinacridone gold. I was adding into the white acrylic paint. Those are stencils that I made using acetate and scissors. In fact, I'll show you a wee... Um, I put in a wee clip of me actually cutting a shape out of the acetate just to show you how easy it is. This is just a piece of packaging that makes nice kind of brickwork walls. And that is a scoring tool that people use to do like crisp folds, like professional folds and papers. So um, I had got three of them for £2 in the range. So this has, it's not came up well. This was a problem I had at the start here. I'm used to working on a smaller plate, so on the bigger plate, the layer where I was putting the stencils on and off was not lifting very easily because I was leaving it too long. So I ended up putting matte medium on um, to lift it again. I have edited out the kind of drying times and some parts of the process that are repeated over and over, like rubbing the paper on. That's just a picture of that one. So this is the acetate. You can see I've already <laughs> drew on it with black marker. So I'm using white this time. This is very easy to cut. I got 10, 12 by 12 inches size of acetate for £2 out of the range. So I don't know how much this sort of stuff is on Amazon, but I think it was much cheaper out of the range. But you see how easy that is to cut. So I use these in nearly every pool from now on. So most of these are basically one background and then a sort of stencil layer on top. Now, I love the high flow acrylic paints and with the heavy bodied acrylic paint because they make like these ice cream colours. They're so pastel and beautiful and pretty. Um, I really do like that um, packaging, don't I? <laughs> Look how gorgeous that is. So I think this is grey. Yes. So this is, I've added black high flow acrylic paint onto here. It does make a lovely grey colour. And I always think grey and pink go well together. Um, I think the pink makes the grey look very warm. I've been mixing the white paint with the high flow acrylic paint drops um, on the gel plate. Ideally, you would want to do it on a palette first. Um, I'm just a bit stingy. <laughs> and when you're doing multiple um, prints, you know, you do use a lot of paint. So that's why I've been doing it on the gel plate. What I would suggest is um, try mixing it by turning the brayer round and round on top of it before you spread it because it makes it more likely to produce a sort of consistent block colour rather than a mottled look. How fabulous is that stencil? I just love it. I, do you know, this was one of my favourites and it's only the second pull. And it's very simple as well. We're just using basic techniques here just now. So that is thalo green into the white acrylic um, paint beautiful it's like aqua 
I'm going to need to try um, blending these colours into other colours of paints and also into black. So making waves here, and you know, it looks fabulous just like that. But no, I had to go back <laughs> and go over and over it. But then what's happened is I've managed to braid it out slightly so that I've muted the pattern. The pattern's still there, but it's less in your face, which I like. Now, that might be burnt sienna this time or quinacridone gold. To be fair, when you mix them in with the white, they're so similar, it's hard to tell. I keep thinking about how much paint is going on top of those stencils and I think, oh, what a waste. It's not really a waste, though. They'll be strengthening the stencils, those layers of paint. Do you know, see the wee squares as well that I put on that one? The three of them together, I think, make a beautiful pattern. I'm going to, make, I'm going to need to make three big squares, I think, of all different sizes. Oh, I think this one was sticking a wee bit, actually. No, it can't have been because I was pressing harder on it. It's a bit bland, but it's okay. You can see the waves. So I'm going in with the black. This was not overly successful. Um, so I've put down a thick coat. So I've actually pulled two off of it. But the paint drying too quickly. And I think I ended up putting glazing fluid in this one actually. I do end up using glazing medium. And what that does is when I put down the layer to do the stencils with I do add a bit of glazing medium in because that kind of prolongs the wetness of the paint for longer it makes it more open look there where is it here using the three of them together do you know as this is why I love the art whisperer because he's got the best stencils he's got a giant jelly plate and I love seeing him pull these stencils up. <laughs> I think it's my favourite part of his videos. That and using the black marker as well. There's something about a big black marker on the jelly plate. I love that too. <laughs> so that looks really clean and crisp. Um, yep. So I'm just making lots of dots with this. These are cake decorating tools. Um... I got three of them for £2 on Amazon. Just these lime green ones you see. Now that's matte medium. So I must have known that this was going to dry too fast. And I'm using matte medium to pull it off. But that's not ideal. Ideally, you want the paint to be wet enough to pull it off without that. Which is why I end up adding in the glazing fluid. Now, I don't show a picture of this one because I actually add more to it and then I mess it up. But I will show you the messed up picture. <laughs> so I am using water-soluble oil pastels and a big jumbo black marker here. I started before I started the video, which was unfortunate. But that's fine. You didn't miss anything, just the black marker. Now, that's the chalk pastels I use later on and that was the water-soluble oil pastels. And they're by Mongayo, who are a very good brand for oil pastels. So this is the high flow acrylic medium, but what I'm doing is putting it in different areas. So I find that the high flow acrylic medium and the acrylic kinks, will they will bead, they won't move properly on the gel plate. Um, however, when your brayer's got wet paint on it and you've used the gel plate a few times and it's kind of got paint residue on it, I do find they work better. Now, this is a couple that I pulled the other day doing this method and it just shows how lovely the effects are that you can get from them, you know, when you use them along with some paint. So, as you can see, the black marker is game 
completely off the jelly plate, but the oil pastel, water soluble oil pastel has left marks. Now this comes off with babe oil and also it does not transfer onto your next image. So although the marks are on the jelly plate, that's it. It's not you're not going to get a ghost print of the water soluble oil pastels. However, later on I use the chalk pastels and you'll see they will keep lifting and lifting and lifting. They're like the terminator until you bring in baby oil and then they'll stop lifting because they just remove completely. So it just shows you how different mediums can behave differently and it's quite interesting to know that. Pretty sure this was quinacridone gold this time. It's got that that shine to it, doesn't it? It's like a shimmer. So I like to add in um, some of the black lines and black shapes or even coloured lines and shapes as I move on to after this because I just think it adds more interest into what's happening behind the stencils when you've pulled the print. I keep saying high flow acrylic medium. It's high flow acrylic paint by Golden. I've put a picture of them on. It comes up in about a minute. So sometimes when I've been mixing the white paint and the high flow acrylic paint together, it's been it's caught on the edge of a stencil and it just you can see there the kind of beading effect that the high flow acrylic paint will have. Where it's been caught under that stencil, that's them there. They're wonderful. I, I'm really happy with them. Oh, this one here. I'd put glazing fluid in with that paint and high flow acrylic paint there. So there was a lot of paint on the stencils and being the miser that I am, I thought, let's stamp these off. So I've put them down and then the brayer, I've put the brayer over them. It's actually quite a good print, this. I quite like it. It's like a, um, you know, it, I think it's going to be very useful for collage, especially if you're using something that's got those shapes in them. Here's a wee picture of it. It's like stone like a stone wall. Here we go. I love this one. So I loved that picture. It made me think of summer when you take the children to the play park and it's near a beach when you're on holiday. So this is black acrylic paint and the brush I'm using is unfortunately no longer able to be used as a brush because I hadn't washed it properly and it's now stiff as a board. However, it gives fantastic lines on the jelly plate for, you know, it's very inconsistent. And also the way that the lines come up when you turn the brush, it, it gives a lovely dark shadows and light kind of look to it. So that was the quinacridone gold and I just put it on my finger, mainly because the, the side of the bottle was wet. Unfortunately, though, I'm so messy that it was black paint on my finger as well. So I'm just using a palette knife just to add a bit more to combine it in with the black paint as if it was meant to be. So, oh, there's some more of the paint going down as well. So when you use the paint this thickly, like with a brush, you really do have to give it a much longer drying time. Now, I dried that for about 20 minutes before I started using this spatula to make these lines. And the main reason I started using the spatula was I went up to test <laughs> the paint and I left a finger mark. <laughs> so I thought, right, let's just get in about that and do something with it. So just doing some dots and some lines and that's it. And then I'll put the paint on. No, this is a pastry brush. This is for putting egg or milk on top of pastry when you're a baker. I bought it for art. So that is thalo blue with the white acrylic paint. And I haven't let the black dry enough. 
it doesn't affect it. It's absolutely fine. But see where you where the paint doesn't cover the black fully? That's because the black's not dry enough to accept it. The black paint is rebelling. That blue is lovely. It's a lovely sky colour. I do love those pastel colours you get with it. I think this print is fabulous before I've even put the stencils on. There's so much variety in the background. It really works. And see because it's the blue with the quinacridone gold. So the quinacridone gold is very like orange. So they have just complemented each other so well. I was going for a peachy colour here, but it always goes pink with that red. <laughs> the red is so strong, I think I really need to use more yellow with it. So when you do one of these jelly plate sessions, you do tend to start off quite simple. And then you just add in more and more as you go along. And I think your jelly plate, once you've used it a few times, you know, in the same session, kind of make, it warms up as well. And it's easier to use. And then, you know, you do, you just think, oh, what can I try now? And you just add and add and add. So these, I do feel the prints get more and more interesting as it progresses. I think this is the start of the very interesting ones. And also because I've put the stencils on top of the paint, I didn't need to worry about the drying time the same. So sometimes I do still use the glazing fluid with it if it feels particularly dry. That wasn't a successful print. And I do add to that again. Um, but I am trying to take ghost prints off the stencils. Now, these are Posca pens. Gold, Posca pen, black. And I think I use white as well, actually. Do you know, I do love lines that are like pathways that just meander all over the place there you go so with the white I think I must be running low on the white because it does um I have to give it a few um bangs on the table to just make it work ah this is one of the water soluble oil pastels in orange and then I, I use blue next. So see when you start doing this, you start off, the first print you're quite reserved. And then you just get bigger and wilder. I did like this pattern actually. So I'm just putting the high flow acrylic paint down a bit more strategically. Um, you can see it's spreading really quite well there, but I think that is just the amount of paint was on the brayer and residue on the gel plate. If you use that without, you know, on a clean gel plate and a clean brayer, it would just bead. You wouldn't get that effect. That looks like a playground as well. It's the ladder effect with the stripes and the boxes. Trying to ah, uh, bet it's green. Oh, glazing fluid. Yep, green. I do like complementary colours. Sometimes I'm harmonious, but generally I will gravitate to the opposites. And I do love this bright aqua green that's made. I'm using my two favourite stencils. Oh, my three favourite stencils at the same time. Oh, my four. I quite like that number five as well. See, I've got the one in the top right corner, I think looks like a four. And the one that's in the big U shape looks like a five. <laughs> I think this turns out lovely. It does. I think that one's really beautiful, actually. And we've got a ghost print left. So, the other day, I had just been practising, not practising, experimenting with the water-soluble oil pastels. And I made a lot of um, prints, and that's one of them there. 
but they're just lots of stripes and stuff. They're not really interesting. So I do use a couple of them to pull up some of the ghost prints. And that one turned out really well because it was just very subtle. But because the big horseshoe shape had transferred quite strongly, but the rest of them not so much. I just think it worked really well. So we're doing purple and yellow this time. And I just know it's yellow before we even start. <laughs> I'm getting braver with these water-soluble oil pastels. I'm just throwing them about. So I'm doing some dots here, hoping that some of them will show up. Um, gold Posca pen. So it's just about trying, when you're doing it, it's just about having fun and trying a lot of different... Do you know, everybody likes different shapes and lines and colours and you do what makes you happy with your ranges. I like almost the effect of a kind of graffiti street art look against kind of quite nice and pretty colours. That's kind of what I like. Oh, and odd shapes. I like really odd shapes. And I'm really enjoying grey. Actually, I'm thinking that grey is actually quite a good colour on the jelly plate. I suppose it's because it's quite neutral. More glazing fluid. Do you know, I'll need to put a picture of the glazing fluid and matte medium on. I know most people know what they are, but... Um, it's just for... There might be somebody that doesn't. I didn't know when I first started watching these um, jelly plate. There are jelly plate videos. Sometimes if you've not mixed the glazing fluid in properly, you get a wee area that's not covered by the paint, but you just need to run the brayer over it a couple of times. My stencils are my stencils are having some they're getting some beautiful colours about them. I don't like them to touch and it I'm kind of keeping them away from the edges as much as possible. But at the same time, I do want quite a lot of the block colour to be covered by the stencils because I want the solid colour to be like a frame to that, you know, the first layer that's got all the interest in it. I've also made that plywood board like a, a sort of registration plate where I have drew a black box that I try and keep the jelly plate within. And then the plywood is A4, the same as my paper. Oh, this one's like tartan. Purple tartan. So because I used glazing fluid with the paint for this layer, um, I've been left with really quite a good ghost print. Now I add it to... Um, one of my, you know, experimental pieces I did when I tried the water-soluble oil pastels. There it is there. And I think I actually take another ghost print. So it's very subtle and I think as a whole picture, it's very boring. However, I think parts of it, you know, you could cut, you could cut it up and use parts of it. That is also a iridescent pearl paint. So it's shimmery, but it's very transparent. So I find that quite useful to lift um, prints when you want... You don't want another layer of paint over the top of them that blocks, you know, the pattern. So... This is me back in with the water-soluble oil pastels. Just going really nuts this time and doing full blocking out with white. I do think this is the last layer of the water-soluble oil pastels. I do think the next one is the chalk pastels. Now that is a kind of pinky purple colour and it doesn't show up very well and it doesn't glide when I use it. It's funny how you can have the same brand in the same pack but there is different behaviours in them and it must be related to the pigment. 
I also add bronze paint to this one and again it's in a very thick layer so it needs to dry for a lot longer than you know using the brayer to put the paint on or even a colour shaper or a spatula to put the paint on when you use the brush you've just got it's not level so there are areas that are quite thick it does look beautiful though against those colours, doesn't it? Really shines. Do you know, I think this was one of my favourites. So I have tried watercolour pencils as well, but not directly on the jelly plate. What I did was I put down some glazing medium and then I used them. And I did get results some results with them but I need to find a way to use them a bit more effectively so I am working on that to see if I can come up with something. I think it's maybe just the fact that they're pencils so they're not really going to give out a lot of you're not going to get a lot of colour on anything in, in one go with them and also I don't know, I don't think you could be rubbing on the top of the jelly plate, you know, like scribbling with a pencil nib. Just adding in some. I think this had dried for about 20 minutes before I came back in with the spatula. Do I add colour? Purple. That is quinacridone magenta. I think I would have been better with yellow here. But then sometimes it's nice to have tone on tone, isn't it? Everything doesn't need to be high contrast. You can see gaps where the bronze paint wasn't dry enough. I love this. I love the shimmer along with all the scratches. That works really well together. Oh, I see myself using the black paint and I'm scared for that picture. <laughs> That's daft. How great do those stencils look against that black paint? I didn't leave that gap between like that capital A and that horseshoe. That gap's not big enough. And when I pull the print off, you'll see it because it doesn't create a nice frame effect the same. But I do draw it in with a black Posca pen. I drew, I dry it, uh, I draw a cheeky thin line. There we go. Oh, here come my squares. I like the kind of flow I've got across the page with the squares. See, I've drew in the line. That's another tartan looking one. A bit more of a modern tartan though, I would say. So I take another ghost print um, and I use a black and white one that I had made earlier on. And I'd said, oh, it doesn't end up as really anything. And... This this is its final layer. The, the, yeah, it just wasn't interesting at all. But that's okay. These things happen. And sometimes, um, you know, they, they're still useful for collage and stuff. So, loved this. This was just a jelly print that was there. And I think it's came out looking... It's so distressed looking. So this is the chalk pastels. Um, like I say, these, you know, you will get lots of ghost prints off the chalk pastels, but baby oil will remove them from the jelly plate. Now, these come up really um, vibrant. And also, I think that because the oil pastels are a water-soluble type, they... When you put the paint on, it smooths them out a bit. However, with the chalk pastels, like 
your line marks and the kind of green of it. It's very detailed, I think. I have used all alcohol markers before on the jelly plate and I'm sure they were successful, but I don't think... I, I think I used my daughter's set and there wasn't very um, many that worked very well. <laughs> and also, um, I don't know about like water... A lot of people use water-soluble crayons. I hear them talking about Karen Dash and Neo colour and stuff. I don't know how any of that stuff would work, but I imagine if the water-soluble oil pastels do... Um, they may work as well. Where would we be without Posca pins? So I think this ends up being my favourite one overall. Um, because it it's the vibrancy of the chalk pastels. Just getting some more paint out of that pen. I think I just use white here. I do. So you can see how vibrant the colours are. I'm just adding in some red. I think I put some more blue on as well. Just do another wee layer because that just seemed a wee bit bare. That red chalk pastel is so vibrant and when I use it in my paintings <laughs> it's like so hard to get rid of. <laughs> I've actually loved making these seed juice in a variety on the jelly plate. I just think it's been so relaxing, so mindful. So do you know even just with the quinacridone gold it was great but once I put in the black paint it just oh it brought it to life. And I think it's the level of contrast along with the vibrancy of the colours. It's just, it just works. So that's us nearly finished. Um, I, I add in another couple of prints at the end um, after this one. Now this pulls off the red, the chalk pastels that were on it already. And I just think that has just added so much to it as well. It's... I love this. It's my favourite one. So I really hope you enjoyed this and thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon and take care. Bye.